This is an automated translation of the deep dive made with artificial intelligence. I am Rodrigo Mendez, and today I will be presenting the new features of GeneXis Next, the new IDE for low-code software development powered by AI. Starting from the vision that we have had for more than 30 years of GeneXis to simplify software development by automating everything that can be automated, we have been asked two big questions. The first is what types of systems should we create, and the second is how we are going to create these systems. From the beginning in GeneXis, we faced the question of how to create these systems working with symbolic artificial intelligence, providing the developer with the ability to clearly describe business needs and user needs through a structured model that will then allow for further actions, like to generate native code, to build mission-critical applications, answering the question of what kind of system we are going to be creating. Looking at this in more technical detail, the GeneXus developer will be working directly within the integrated development environment, creating a model where they describe in detail both the specific business needs and the requirements of the user while being assisted by symbolic AI. This model will then be generated by various code generators to produce native code, to create web applications, cross-platform applications, fully native mobile applications, databases, the services between applications, and more. Uaie, what has changed lately since the emergence of generative artificial intelligence? It has changed the answer to the question of what kind of applications we should create, and it has also changed the answer to the question of how we should create those applications. And here is the way in which the developer working within GeneXis Next will be engaged, not only by describing the model where they specify both business needs and user requirements, but by performing this task with the assistance of generative artificial intelligence, which is designed to further simplify and streamline the process. To answer the question of what type of applications we are creating today, these will also include applications that specifically require having embedded generative artificial intelligence. Additionally, we will see that GeneXus will enable us to create these advanced applications, commonly referred to as AI applications. From a more technical perspective, the developer will now be working within the integrated development environment where they will continue to make use of symbolic AI. However, they will also be assisted by generative AI in their tasks. What GeneXus will be generating as an outcome of the developer's work is native code for responsive web applications, as well as for cross-platform mobile applications, databases, and even integrations with generative AI. This integration will be achieved through assistance specifically designed to bring additional value to the mission-critical system that we are building. At this point, I would like to move forward and introduce these key pillars, which GeneXus Next IDE brings to the table as part of its implemented features and the new functionalities it offers. Let's start with a very important one, requested by both the GeneXus community and the market, making the IDE cross-platform. What does this mean? It means that we will have the capability to access the IDE directly in the cloud, utilizing any web browser, and additionally, we will be able to work with the IDE in a desktop version. This desktop version will be available to run seamlessly across any operating system, whether that be Windows, Linux, or Mac. It is important to mention that GeneXus Next is now built on a 64-bit architecture, which brings a significant improvement in how efficiently the business logic functions that operate behind the IDE. Now let's take a closer look at another of the major updates in the GeneXus Next IDE, particularly with respect to the time it takes for us to have the platform completely ready to begin building applications. We'll observe that this preparation time has been notably reduced because when we access the IDE through the cloud, we'll be able to do so directly via web browsers. This approach means that we won't need to perform any type of local installation at all, which allows us to get started working with GeneXus Next immediately and with much greater ease. In the case of the desktop integrated development environment, we will also be able to have GeneXus running in record time due to the fact that GeneXus is delivered through containers, which we can deploy on any operating system we are working with. What does this mean in practical terms? It means that we will have the ability to experience instant onboarding within the platform, allowing us to immediately begin building systems as soon as we need. Therefore, considering that the IDE is now fully cross-platform and with the added benefit of rapid deployment speed on the platform to start working right away, we can confidently say that we have the capability to build any kind of system from any location. And now, we are going to explore another very interesting aspect, which is how generative artificial intelligence will assist us throughout the development process in the GeneXus Next IDE. In this regard, 
I would like to highlight four key aspects that we will observe as important modifications in the platform, all aimed at enhancing our experience, our entirely new development experience in Genexus Next. To begin with, we will enjoy an improved user experience, featuring a dark mode for the IDE, and we will also have a new approach for working with transactions, where we will be able to work by directly coding the transaction information. Alternatively, we will continue to have the classic method available, where we can define the structure of the transactions as well. And this is not the only thing. We will also have performance improvements when loading web panels and web layouts that are much more complex and have more controls. The GeneXus. Next integrated development environment not only includes the visual enhancements and fresh appearance that we observed, but it also comes equipped with an embedded artificial intelligence assistant. This AI assistant is designed to assist us in creating every object within the knowledge base. To explain how it accomplishes this, here we are showing that we can instruct it to create, for instance, a client entity. Following this, the assistant will display a set of data that it identifies as relevant or essential for that client entity. Once we instruct the assistant to proceed, it will then provide us with a detailed definition of each of those attributes, including the specific data types assigned. After confirming this, it will proceed to automatically create these elements within the knowledge base. Furthermore, we are now going to request that it not only works with the client data, but also creates an additional entity to represent both products and sales orders. And GeneXus Next, in the same way, will provide us with an initial outline of how this entity is going to be structured, allowing us to review and then confirm based on the data that the assistant suggests. This way, we can initiate the automatic creation process of these two entities. What is particularly important here is that these entities, besides being automatically generated, will also be interconnected and interrelated with the rest of the model, ensuring full integration and alignment within the entire system. And although this video is showing how we work with the automatic creation of entities, the wizard is able to help us with the creation of all the objects that are in the GeneXus knowledge base, whether they are procedures, data providers, or even an object that we are going to see next, which will also play a crucial role in the development of the applications. In addition to the embedded wizard, we also have an inline wizard. This wizard works within the lines of code that the GeneXus developer codes and provides assistance by suggesting the creation of attributes and the definition of rules. For example, in a customer transaction, we can use the inline wizard to prompt us to create an attribute for the customer registration date. The inline wizard serves as a helpful tool for developers. Its purpose is to streamline the programming process by offering suggestions and guidance directly within the code and an image attribute for the client. What we are observing here is that artificial intelligence is already providing a helpful suggestion for setting up this attribute within the entity, essentially creating it on our behalf. In addition to this, we will also be able to work with the inline assistant in other parts of the transaction, such as within the rules section. In this case, we are specifically requesting it to suggest the rules that should be taken into account and implemented within the transaction itself. In doing so, we significantly accelerate the entire development process especially in the specification of transactions and other critical objects within the knowledge base in the GeneXus Next IDE. Now that we explored how artificial intelligence helps us within the how, we will now shift our focus to understand how generative AI can assist us with the what. This means exploring how generative AI, through the use of GeneXus Next IDE, will become part of the application generated. We will go over the ways in which we can model applications that incorporate AI. To fully understand this, we are going to review three key functionalities beginning with the introduction of a new object known as the assistant object. We are going to examine a new type of data known as embedding, and we will also discover that we have the ability to implement automatically and through a user control chat interfaces within the applications that are generated. These interfaces will enable interaction with artificial intelligence assistants that we will define and configure. Concerning the assistant object, we will be able to create a completely new type of object in our knowledge base where we will describe in detail how a generative artificial intelligence assistant will function within the generated application, outlining its specific role and capabilities. And with this functionality, what GeneXus Next will be doing is generating an assistant that functions within global enterprise artificial intelligence, which will then remain automatically connected to the application. Furthermore, we have the embedding data type, which provides the capability to define, as part of a transaction, for example, a vector where we will be able to semantically store the complete meaning of this record. 
what exactly does this allow us to achieve? It will ultimately allow us in the generated application to conduct searches and apply semantic filters without needing to explicitly define each record's categories beforehand. To give a clear example of how this works, imagine we are managing a store that offers a wide variety of items, such as clothing, food, and footwear. We can set up an entity, in this instance using an embedding data type, which analyzes each item based on its description. For example, within the application, we will be able to perform automatic queries to retrieve specific items based on a question such as, I want pet toys. In this way, we won't need to explicitly identify which of these items are pet toys beforehand, as the application will understand and categorize them automatically based on semantic analysis. For instance, if we want to determine which products are best suited for running a marathon, we will have the capability to perform that search using semantic similarity, which is carefully stored within that specific type of data. This functionality will enable us to define an entirely new approach to working with the information that we have stored within our system. And here we have the chat interface that we will be able to include quickly through the chat user control. This aspect is important as it represents the interface that the GeneXus Next IDE will provide to enable us to fully close the loop regarding user experience in applications that are generated to interact with generative AI. Additionally, it is important to highlight that this interface can also be utilized in more general cases where a user might need a messaging interface that doesn't necessarily have to be connected or linked to any generative AI service, thus offering more flexibility. And lastly, to sum up all these new features of GeneXus Next, we will observe that the GeneXus Next integrated development environment is not the only component within the software development cycle that is now fully enhanced and supported by generative AI. Even though the GeneXus Next IDE establishes itself as a central component in the software development process, I invite you to learn about additional new tools that will be assisting us throughout various stages of the application development process, specifically incorporating generative artificial intelligence. We have always referred to GeneXus as software that creates software, and that concept is also evolving today, as GeneXus Next now becomes software that is assisted by artificial intelligence to create software with integrated artificial intelligence capabilities. Thank you very much.